Hello. I have successfully moved back to New Zealand from Australia. I've been over there for a few weeks. I played some gigs, but also packing up all my gear, all my stuff, everything I own, and bringing it back here to New Zealand, which has been um, pretty hectic. We also caught COVID while in Australia, so that was a bit of a bit of a bummer. And then when I got back to New Zealand, um, I caught the flu, which was fucking shit. It was way worse than COVID, um, and that's put me out of action for quite a while. It's been very hard to create video content uh, because my voice and my respiratory system has all been quite quite out of sync. But I'm starting to get on the mend. I'm still not fully repaired, but. Uh, so apologies for the sniffling and sounding all blocked, but I'm just gonna try and get some stuff out there. I have been writing music though, so that's been cool. Here's a track. Now there's something in this track that's been kind of bugging me, and uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity to make a video, because it's uh, an interesting idea and I get to build something. Now let's just jump into that. So I have a sample here. So I have this problem and it happens to me quite a lot when I'm building a track like this is I just chuck in random samples that I find that think would suit well, usually as placeholders. But then I really like them and end up getting attached to them and I really like this, I think it sounds really nice, it's really fitting, but it is just a sample from a sample pack and it's not really changed at all, which kind of doesn't really gel that well with me. Um, it's not terribly creative just dragging and dropping a sample. So what I want to do today is build a device that works well with the Ableton Live audio effects that take MIDI input. So remember we have a few of these. We've got the Corpus. So if I open this up, you'll see we can take a MIDI input that determines the pitch of the resonance from the Corpus. And also the Spectral Resonator, which is a very fun one to play with. This has an internal MIDI mode. But the thing we don't have is a real-time audio to MIDI converter. So this sample here, I want to take real-time pitch tracking, similar to how the tuner does. So if I load up a tuner here, and we'll put it into this mode. So see how that's doing a pretty good job at detecting the pitch of the sample? Probably not the best sample, considering it's such a, uh, what's well, kind of a Middle East sound which is swaying around the place. Maybe it is a good idea, we'll, we'll find out. But this doesn't output MIDI. I really want this to output MIDI. I feel like a device that takes real-time audio and outputs a MIDI note really completes the chain of getting those cool resonator corpus feedback loops going. So I'm going to build that today. And let's just go ahead and build it. It's going to be a bit slow again. Look, I'm just trying to pick up the pace again slowly getting into things. So I'm going to load up a new Max for Live device here, and I'm going to be using an object called Retune. Uh, Retune is kind of a makeshift auto tune type thing, um, but it's quite good at detecting frequencies. You'll see this output here has a detected frequency uh, tag. This one is closest note, and this one is deviation in sense. So if I was to hook up the audio, I'm just taking the left and plugging it into this Retune here. Uh, and we need a signal box or a number box. If I connect this to the output, which again is the detected frequency, and play this. Okay, what I need to do is give it the appropriate attribute, which is pitch detection. Okay, let's turn this on. I'm just going to turn this down. Okay, now. okay, so you can see this ticking along now. So this is actually giving us what it considers to be the detected frequency and it outputs the signal value. So I could put a uh, float or frequency to MIDI note number. So let's put that there and we'll send that into an integer box. I need to make sure this is looping. So you see this is doing the conversion of frequency to MIDI note number. 
So it's giving us a an estimation of what the MIDI note number is. And if I put in a K slider and hook this up here, so let's jump it around quite a lot. But it's kind of giving us an idea of what the note is. Uh, one way we could listen to this is put in an oscillator. This is a sine wave oscillator. Uh, I'm going to put it into a live gain just so we have volume control. And this oscillator currently hasn't been given a frequency to play. So let's go ahead and hook this straight into the cycle. And I'm going to hook this out into the output here. Let's bring it up. So it's kind of working, you can hear that sine wave is following along with this frequency here. Let's just remove that for now. We'll put this to over here. Instead of using this number tilde, I'm going to be using... Um, we'll use a snapshot. Because this allows us to kind of sample a signal like this here. At a certain period that we determine. Uh, and I'm going to do that by adding a uh, an integer into this. So this is our time in seconds. So it's going to be sampling this signal very, very, very quickly. And then outputting a floating point value. So if we connect this here, bring this up. So this is at 9 milliseconds. You'll see this was way quicker and probably more accurate. So if I connect this to here. That's good, but that gives us the option of increasing this. So if things are too jumpy, we can kind of throttle the time that it takes those samples. Interested to hear how this sounds. So what I'm actually going to do here, let's stop that playing, is let's go over here. I'm going to create a send. And we'll call this, uh, what do we call this? Pitch MIDI send. Oh, we'll call it Pitch MIDI note. Okay, so this is going to output the note value to a send of Pitch MIDI note. And now what I can do is create another device inside of this project and put the receive in there. So Max MSP can send values from one device to another using these send receives, which send receives, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like you can patch chords between different devices. Uh, I'm going to create a new MIDI track here. And let's just call this test output. And we're going to throw down an operator. So we just have a basic sine wave here. Let's solo this. Now I'm going to go and put in a max MIDI effect. So a MIDI effect can go before an instrument on a MIDI track, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to open this up. And if I put receive, ah, what did I call, call it? Pitch MIDI note. I hope I called it that. And now if I put an integer here, hopefully this should be, uh, so it's already picking it up. But one thing I noticed is, well, two things I noticed is it immediately went to negative 999, which is not a valid MIDI note, so that's no good. We will figure that out. And also, um, because it instantly updated it, it seems to be blasting that, that value through, which is going to be a problem for us. So immediately what I'll do just to fix that is put a change, uh, which filters out the repetition of numbers. So if I put this here, that should be all good. Um, now let's just play this. So we can see the note coming out here. Um, now this is obviously going to be monophonic. I'm not going for something which will accurately find each note and play it. So if the same note is played consecutively, it's not going to re-trigger here. I just want to have a continuous note on, note off pair. Uh, I'm going to have to use probably a poly... 1-1, one, one. so this is just my way of making it monophonic. Uh, this requires 
a pitch and a velocity so we will put a message box here with dollars ones which means we're going to take a variable input and 127 which is going to be the fixed velocity so if I feed this out here into the message box we should be getting a pair now so this is giving a note value and 127 as a velocity the reason I'm using a poly here is because whenever I feed a new value in here or whenever this sends it a new note value it's going to handle the note off messages for me so I need to be able to send it a 127 and then when the next note happens we need to have a, a zero because if we don't send note offs and just note ons they're all going to stick and if our synthesizer isn't set to monophonic it's just going to rack up the voices and sound fucking terrible so that should do a thing so if I feed that into a poly here and um <coughs> excuse me and uh, so this outputs the voice number in this case we just have one voice so we don't need to worry about that we have pitch and velocity so we could probably feed these to a note out like so so note out takes the pitch from there and the velocity from there so that should now output notes into this operator let's check that okay it's kind of working let's just change this to something like a saw <laughs> okay it's kind of working but moment of truth um before I advance on that let's get this concept actually working so I'm going to go ahead and load a spectral resonator onto this main chant track so if we listen to this you can hear that the spectral resonator is taking control of the frequency here so we're just stuck on 110 hertz however let's choose MIDI mode let's choose the MIDI from test output and moment of truth not really working let's bring this down why are we getting weird glitches there? Okay, I think I know what's happening here. Um, this negative 999 is no good, so I'm going to put a cell negative 999. I can hear that saw wave popping along at negative 999. So this will select negative 999 and if that is the case we need to send the message stop to the poly which will kill all the voices that are currently playing. And if it's not negative 999 we go through here. Let's try that. It's not really working, is it? We seem to be getting way too many notes coming out of this test output here. Uh, we've got our change here, so that's all good. So what's the difference between this one? Let's change the test output to a sine wave here. Maybe, maybe I need to do this prefix. I don't know if this will work. Something's gone wrong. Bring this up. Okay, 
Okay, that should be working, right? Okay, we have some kind of result, so let's, I'm going to leave it there, and um, I'm going to have a think about how I can improve this, and um, yeah, catch you in the next video. Actually, before I finish, I just, as soon as I stopped recording, I realized what I've done. I've made an error. Can you spot it? So what I've got is I've got this max audio effect, which is detecting the pitch after the spectral resonator. So the spectral re resonator is already doing its retuning, and then this device is picking up. Uh, the pitch which is totally wrong and proof of, of how my brain is operating at the moment so I'm going to drag this max patch before the spectral resonator and now let's have a listen Okay, so that is so much better than what I'd just previously done uh, with the changing round of the effect order. And now I'm quite excited to figure out how to get this a little bit more smooth and consistent and polished. So I'll pick that up in the next video.